So in the notes on hypothesis test for a mean, there was this section here where we turn our value of t into a probability and then a p-value. So with technology like the TI-84 calculator, that's kind of done for us and no big deal. But if you're stuck with using the table, um, here's the way you approach that. First of all, on the class webpage, we have a link to tables, or you can get there um, from a variety of places if you're on Connect Math. And um, this problem here had 39 degrees of freedom. So on this T table, we go down to the row for 39 degrees of freedom. And we look for our value of T, which is 1.54. And notice there's only positive values of T here. So if this had been a negative value of T, we would take the absolute value of it and be looking up the positive value of that t. So 1.54 we're looking for on the row with 39 degrees of freedom. And we don't find 1.54, but we can tell that 1.54 would be in between this 1.3 and this 1.6. So then we scroll up to the top of the table and see what columns we're in. So we're in we're in between the column for a tail area of 0 0.05 and a tail area of 0.10. So we know that the probability in question is between 0 0.05 and 0.10. And we could even write here, if we were doing this by table, um, right in here, the probability that t is greater than 1.54 is between 0 0.05 and 0.10. That's totally legit. And then when that probability gets multiplied by 2, you could say between 0 0.05 and 0.10. And then that whole mass multiplied by 2 means that you have a probability between 0.10 and 0.20. And notice that our final, our final p-value from technology is a p-value between 0.10 and 0.20. But the interesting thing is that usually alpha is going to be a number like 0 0.05, 0 0.01, something like that. So even if we just have a ballpark value for the p-value, that's usually close enough to make our decision on whether to reject or fail to reject. In this case, we already knew, even before doubling, that we had a p-value between 0 0.05 and 0.10. So if alpha was 0 0.05, and we've got a p-value between 0 0.05 and 0.10, then we already know we're going to fail to reject. So, and even becomes more obvious after we multiply by 2. So again, if you're using the table, the best you can say about this p-value is that it's between 0 0.10 and 0 0.20. But that's still enough information for us to make the decision on whether to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject.